What could be bigger than Brexit? Well, the world's financial firms are getting ready for the end of LIBOR. The scandal hit global reference rate and similar benchmarks are due to be phased out by the end of 2021. Now, the benchmarks are used to set rates in roughly $370 trillion of financial products around the globe. So, is the world ready? Are the world's banks ready? Well, my next guest has been a key player in the UK financial system for the past 20 years. As head of the government economic service until 2017, he was a top advisor on macroeconomic policy. And then just over 18 months ago, he was appointed deputy governor for markets and banking at the Bank of England. He's also one of the names mentioned, of course, in the running for the top job uh, of when the current governor steps down. So Dave Ramsden, welcome to Bloomberg. Thank you so much for coming in. We had a really interesting panel discussion on LIBOR. And I guess the, the, um, you know, the market was worried that the banks wouldn't be ready. First of all, can you just quantify, you know, what the exercise of this morning at the Bank of England was? Is it to kind of, you know, focus the minds of banks? Is it to, to just, you know, remember to rally the troops that, guys, this is being phased out and you need to be ready? Um, well, thank you very much, Francine, Tom, for having me uh, on your show. Um, I think this morning's event had three real elements to it in terms of certainly what I was... Uh, looking for. I mean, obviously, it wasn't just me. I was there with Andrew Bailey from the FCA and uh, Tushar Maratsia, who, who I'll come back to. The three things we were trying to get across is that on sterling uh, LIBOR and the transition away from sterling LIBOR to our new risk-free rate, Sonia, real progress is being made. So that was that was a key point to get across and to acknowledge that with a we had a lot of people a lot of market participants in the bank with us this morning uh, engaging with us on that but that was message number one message number two really that more needs to be done and we need to um, accelerate progress with um, the deadline uh, for uh, when LIBOR is supported 2021 and so with that in mind we um, were keen both to get more senior engagement from financial mm -hmm. institutions, and we have many of them with us this morning, because we need board level accountability and responsibility for this. Third message, uh, it's really important, and this was the title of the session this morning, uh, that uh, financial institutions stop issuing LIBOR-related products that go beyond the 2021 deadline. So we were calling last orders. But, David, how, how big is the transition? Is this bigger than MIFID II? Um, I think it's... Um, I th what we heard this morning is that institutions have had to make a lot of these transitions, but they now... They've really got their systems together to do it. It is a big transition. There, it, you know, LIBOR is ingrained right across the financial system. But um, the major financial institutions who we've engaged with through our dear CEO exercise, where we asked them to tell us what they had been doing, they have project plans, they are planning, they're doing scenario planning. So it is a very big, significant transition, and obviously not just no. sterling globally, as you were saying. Is, is the deadline immovable? The deadline is really important because it is only up to that deadline that we know that LIBOR will be um, supported. That's the agreement that the FCA uh, reached and that was important to give a breathing space. And it's really important that institutions aim for that deadline and really accelerate their progress they're making on moving off LIBOR. And you're sounding so gracious and political. You sound like some of the political leaders we've seen with the Queen uh, this week, getting through the moment. Let me <laughs> cut to the chase. The bankers love LIBOR. It's an ancient institution. The London Interbank Offered Rate works, works, works. And now we're going to change the rules. What would you suggest will replace it? Well, just, um, and, and thanks for framing it with that, you know, given that we're here in London. I mean, I think it's really important to stress that LIBOR is a very, very fragile rate. The transactions underpinning it... Agreed, um, but it works. Well, it's a very fragile rate, whereas we have a replacement rate for sterling, which is Sonia, which is backed yep. by many, many more... Then what are we waiting for? Well, we're not waiting. There's been really good progress on, uh, on transition to Sonia, but we need that progress to accelerate with only two and a half years. What was the response from the bankers? I mean, I don't know why this isn't fixed next week, but then, I, you know, we're hearing that <laughs> but again. But then you're not in, in charge of a bank. <laughs> the, I, I mean, to, and, and may, maybe this is me being 
diplomatic, or, uh, uh, but I think it is right to be fair to the bankers. LIBOR is really ingrained in yes. systems. So it's going to be a really complex transition undertaking to get all the different aspects of the market off LIBOR. Derivatives is moving quickly. We need the cash market to follow. Okay, should corporate well borrowers that need a term rate be giving an extension if they need more time beyond the deadline? I, I think it's really important to focus on the deadline, which is why um, we heard from the chair of the uh, risk-free rates working group that we set up. This is the public authorities working with the market, which is actually going to have to lead this transition. We've recognised the need for a forward-looking term rate. Three providers have come forward with credible plans to offer one. And so we have to work through that. But meanwhile, for a lot of borrowers, they can use compounded overnight. And they should get on and do that. And to be honest, I see a possible advantage here for London getting on and innovating with the new product, Sonia, the new infrastructure, this could be good for London as a financial centre. But Intercontinental Exchange, which administers LIBOR currently, basically saying LIBOR isn't going away. Why is a company saying that? Why are they getting it wrong? Well, I think you have to look... The, yeah, they're obviously the provider, so... They have skin in the game, yeah. What you have to look is at the whole system and the recognition, I think, from from all the key players throughout the ecosystem that LIBOR is going to be going away. As I've stressed, it's very fragilely based now. It's better than it was. But it is, a not, it is, it is not an effective piece of market infrastructure. So we need to, we need to make this transition work.